Hi, everyone. This is Eliza Coleman, the stunt coordinator on Hereditary and Kevin Williamson's film Sick. And you are watching Craven Something Scary. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, that's really bright. Let me fix that. <laughs> well, good evening, everyone. Well, visitors, subscribers, my patrons, and of course, my amazing Cravenites. Welcome to Craven Something Scary, where it's all horror all the time. Joe, great to have you here. And what a very special night this is. And I'm so excited to have our very special guest tonight. And he actually is the first person that I've had the chance to meet now that worked on Saw X, which, as you guys know, uh, and in case you don't know, that is my favorite horror film of 2023. It is my most favorite film, followed in a close second by, of course, Thanksgiving. Eli Ross Thanksgiving. But Saw X is my most favorite. I think it was phenomenally executed. The writing is tremendous. Uh, the performances, everything, the cinematography, the stunt work, it really hit on all cylinders for me. And my biggest concern for the film was can they pull off a movie between one and two? We're going to insert it. Can we do that or can they do that without retconning or wrecking the timeline? And I'm happy to say absolutely did. It was incredible. So if you are one of those rare out few out there who have not seen it yet by some reason, my gosh, you need to watch it. Go watch it after this uh, this stream tonight with Daniel. It's 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 a it's a purchase worthy. Just buy it and you'll love it. So, guys, I'm excited to share now uh, my guest. I want to bring on here. We're not going to waste any more time. Uh, we've got uh, our full hour uh, here up to an hour with him. He's been very gracious to come and spend some time with us. And I'm excited about that. So please welcome a stunt coordinator for Saw 10 or Saw X, please welcome Mr. Daniel Salazar to the channel. Hi, Daniel. Hey, how are you, Stephen? Hi, everybody. I, hey, man, I am great. And I want to thank you for making the time to come uh, spend some time with me and my community here on YouTube. Uh, we're big fans of the film and the project, and we are big fans of the stunt community here and really want to shine the light on the work that's being done in these films. Because, Daniel, my philosophy is this. If if we didn't have these stunt performances, these movies would be awful. awful. Let's be honest. They just would. They would. They would not be good. <laughs> and uh, the work that you do as a coordinator and as a performer yourself, those bring these movies to life. They make them real. They make them feel real. And without you, the realism would be gone and no one would want to watch these movies. So 
I just want to say thank you, first of all, before we even get into specifics, thank you for the career you've chosen and for doing such an amazing job. And I and I believe that uh, if 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 Billy was here, uh, <laughs> he would agree <laughs> that you've done an amazing job on this film. I love that picture, guys. Check that out. Isn't that great? That is just that's such a cool image, man. That was this, that was a fun moment. I was I was just asking a friend of mine, hey, get me a picture with Billy. I'm not telling how to get in and deliver those goods for uh, for for Mateo. And <laughs> everybody was laughing. <laughs> well, I got I got in the picture. That's so good. No, it's I mean, that's something to be proud of, man. If I let me tell you, if I if I had worked on that film, that's the one I'd be showing all my friends all my instagram it'd be everywhere man like that's <laughs> that's the one so i appreciate you sharing that with us that's great so good um but i'll tell you what daniel how about this before we get into uh, oh this is funny julie says <clears throat> hey julie says it looks like you're teaching your son to ride a tricycle <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's great I think and, it looks like that. It's just that my son is not that <laughs> fancy dressing. <laughs> oh, gosh. Hey, and real quick, before we get into it, I do want to say uh, hello to the chat. A real blanket hello to everyone. Thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Uh, and I, I won't call everyone out by name because our time is so limited. But I just want you guys to know that I see you're here. And I appreciate you. Thank you to my moderators in the chat tonight, which of which Julie is one of my moderators. Thank you for uh, moderating the chat, keeping things uh, as it should be. Much appreciated. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, my goodness. Um, so Daniel, how about this? Before we get into Saul, let's talk about, I always like to find out how things began. It's fascinating to me to hear origin stories. So what would you say was uh, or when did you, when would you say was that moment in your life that you realized I want to be a stunt performer in the film business? I want to maybe eventually be a stunt coordinator after I guess some years doing this. How did that start for you? Well, it's actually a, a kind of a funny story. I was, I was watching a movie with my dad when I was 10 and it was a Western movie and there was this guy running over a train and and I told my dad, um, I want to I wanna do what he's doing. And he, he went like, what? Why would you want to go on a train? And I was like, no, no, I, I know it's not the actor who's doing it, mm -hmm. right? There is some other guy who does it in, in, instead of him. I want to do that. And, and he was like, oh, OK, well, I don't know what, what would you need to do for that, mm -hmm. but good luck. And, and work hard and then <laughs> the funny part is that after maybe two or three years after i started already being a, a stone performer i was running over a train and by the end of the, of the day i was able to call my dad and say hey dad guess what and he said what i ran over a train today and on top of that i jumped off it and wow like, what for real yeah, so he was like, congratulations, you're uh, basically fulfilling your childhood dream, like literally. That is so cool. Oh, my gosh. Did that feel surreal a little bit? Did it, just have, like, did it feel like, wow, I've done it, like I'm doing it. I'm doing yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. That's so Living cool. the dream for real. Yes, absolutely, man. That's that's awesome. That is a great story. What a great story. Um so I know you've done a lot of work um, outside of, uh, of Saul. And so how many years now have you been a stunt performer and coordinator now? How long have you been doing this uh, for a career? Well, there's there's going to be two parts for that, that answer. The first one is I've been a stunt performer for almost 11 years now. So oh, wow. I started back in 20, 2013 about around july that was my first uh okay my, my first uh, interaction with the movie okay and as a stunt coordinator 
it's not that I wanted to, or I thought about, I want to be a stunt coordinator, but mm -hmm. at first I, I was working with a, a crew that there was many things that were wrong in what they were doing. Oh. Uh, especially when it came to safety, you know? Oh. And as a stunt performer, that's something that you always want to be aware of and taken care of. Everything should be as safe as possible. Mm -hmm. And and then I started thinking, like, I got to move up so I can do things right. And after a while, uh, many things happened. But I changed to a different uh, uh, stunt team, the one I'm I'm in right now. There, it's okay. called Four Element Stunts. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you the. the yeah, name, we've actually uh, got the Instagram for Four Elements here. Oh, awesome! That's it. That's exactly the the team I'm working with. Uh, Omar is the, the the main coordinator. I'm his right hand man, and at the Another funny thing is that Saw X was my first official project as a stunt coordinator. Oh, one wow. One day he was, he was, um, we were talking about, about work and he said like, um, you know what, I'm going to go to Durango and I'm going to be coordinating a movie and you're not going to come with me. And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> thank you. And he yeah. was like, but I'll see you tomorrow morning and I'm going to explain why. And okay. so I, I, I arrived and we, we came in an office and he was, uh, there was a meeting going on and he was like, Hey, everybody, this is going to be the stone coordinator that we're going to be living with you. His name is Daniel. And he's going to be in charge of, wow. of all the movie with you. And wow. after the meeting was over, he said like, okay, well, that's why you're not going. Like, you're going to back <laughs> me up on this one and you're going to be on so X. Yeah, it, it was, it was uh, actually, it felt a little bit heavy on my shoulders at first, but I had all the support and, and well, wow. it turned out well, good. And you killed it. I mean, you did an amazing job. My gosh, Daniel. Wow. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yo, phenomenal. Just phenomenal. And, and, and Julie, Julie mentions that's an amazing first gig to land. Yes. I know indeed. it is. <laughs> Uh, and my good buddy Marcus over at I Shot Him Six Times, good friend of mine, great content creator, says, this is awesome, just like Saul X. Welcome, Daniel. You did a fantastic job, 100%. Thank you all. It's awesome. Yes. So now that you've had a taste, I'm just curious, of uh, being the stunt coordinator, kind of helping to basically run the show, right? Get, you know, get everything lined up. And I'll let you tell us more about that as we, in a little bit. But now that you've had a taste of that role versus being a performer only, wh what do you think? Do you think stunt coordinating is what you'd like to get into more as a focus? Well, yeah. Uh, the thing is that um, while we were shooting Saw X, um, well, I had the chance to literally get into the creative side of uh, of making a movie, not just the performing side. So mm -hmm. it wasn't me getting an instruction, but it was me, uh, you know, trying to figure out how to make it work. And it has two sides on it because I really like doing stunts. That is literally my, my dream. But at the same time, I have the opportunity to make it look good in the way that I would think it should be looking. And that helped a lot also uh, yeah. during the shooting. And and that ha something amazing happened at the end of the of the film. And we were at the rap party and I was talking to Kevin, the director, mm -hmm. and, and he was telling me, have you ever thought about being a director? And I was like, no, nope, never. And he, wow. he, told, he said, well, you should, because you, you know how to do things that normally a director wouldn't know because of your background as a stunt. And, and that really got me thinking, like, maybe that would be something good to do. And, but that's something that's going to take a little bit of time because, you know, life happens right now. And sure, I wouldn't, I wouldn't 
think about just becoming a stunt coordinator or only going to to be a director which i would really like but i will always want to do uh you know i will always want to perform because sometimes okay. right now i'm working on a project you know there's an nda i'm, I'm not able to say anything but ah. i'm coordinating this other movie right now Ooh, and okay. and there's uh, there's a scene that we were rehearsing uh, last week and i would really like to do that action but i <laughs> i'm not big i'm not the guy i'm not even close to be Mm -hmm. I'm not even looking like the actor, so there's no way for me to do it, right? But but it's something I would like to do, and that's the that's the thing that the, the other side of the of the coin. Wow, that's. Now, I know you can't talk about the movie, and I'm not going to get you in trouble. Um, can I just ask you one question? Is it in the horror genre? Are you allowed to say that or not? What? Well, well, I'm sorry, I didn't get you. Oh no, that's okay. Um, is it? I'm just going to ask the question. If you can't answer it, totally cool. But is is the movie? Is it a horror movie? Like Saul was a horror movie. Would, no, would say, it's not a horror. No, movie? it is. It is a thriller, but it's it is not a horror movie. Got it. It's a thriller. Okay. Well, all right. Yeah, I, I read thriller. I read that in the comments. I would like I would I would like it to be Saw so Eleven, but no, <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Uh, yes, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, congratulations on now Thank your you. second uh movie that you're doing in coordinator yeah. that's amazing i mean the doors that will open for you and already have i mean having your name attached to a film like saw 10 that is huge daniel that's it is that's massive man and so wow that's a good that's great i'm so happy for you i really am um now we got a super chat that's come through. My good friend Eric over at Two Boys has sent $5 Super Chat to support the channel. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate that. And his question for you, Daniel, is do you take a moment to imagine your scene or action to predict where the limitations will be moving forward? What is And then what is a stunt you hope to perform? So I guess it's a two-part, two questions. So I guess do you, yeah, you mentally well, picture it. Like my ideal action? Or uh, I would say, let me see here. Yeah, yeah, no, that's okay. Uh, do you take a moment to, so I think like, for example, if there's a scene that's coming up to do, um, do you, before you do it, do you like go through uh, a picturing it? Like in your mind, oh, okay, like yeah, picture okay. it, yeah, yeah. Every every time, I mean, the the harder the scene, the more time it takes for you to just make sure that you wanna you you wanna do it. Like, um, yeah, there's uh, for the last year and part of this year, we were shooting a, a series for HBO. Uh, at Dominican Republic, and one of the scenes, I was a stunt assistant coordinator there, so I wasn't gonna do much action. But in the end, um, the scene turned out to be for me and oh. some of my friends. There was four of us involved, and since I cannot disclose uh, what it was about, I just can tell you it was it was life threatening. And, oh, wow. and it was really exciting. Ooh. And as we were rehearsing it, uh, we were rehearsing it like I could tell you, like it was at thirty percent the speed we were gonna use in real life. And wow, it was it was less than that. We were all thinking like this is gonna be a huge, it's gonna be a huge impact on the floor, and mm -hmm. it's also gonna be. Uh, mind challenging by the moment we were we we're gonna do it Ooh. and we we're discussing it but the moment that we arrived to the set and everything was prepared and we were just ready to hear action um what happened is that everybody was quiet 
nobody was on the whole set making a sound, which is something weird. Wow. But everybody was in the same tension as we were. And it, it, there's different ways of getting ready for an action, but I, I, I can tell you that everybody looks ahead and tries to figure out what can go wrong and how am I gonna avoid that kind of outcome. Mm -hmm. And and for the other for the other answer, uh, a stunt that I hope to perform. And well, I always wanted to to you know get hit by a car. Oh wow! I'm weird, but I've been hit by cars like two different times in my life without being working <laughs> as a real athlete. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> thank God, nothing. Yes, that happened. But yes. I was. I was in the way of four different scenes with uh, car hits, and in the end, the four times were taken away from me for different reasons. So that's something I would like to do. Uh, crash a car is another thing mm. I'd like to do. And yeah. another one that I'd like to do is a little bit complicated. So I would be doing a full body burn, Ooh. running through a glass, and doing a high fall of people oh so my it's going to be three, three in one that's uh something i would like to do wow that's amazing i'm telling you i you know it's another reason you know i have so much respect for what you and your peers do because there's nothing in my dna that would ever would, could ever do something like that like i couldn't imagine it man i couldn't imagine it that's but I'm so thankful that you can, you know, and that you do, uh, because it's incredible. Just, whoa. Wow. What a great answer. And what, what some great questions uh, there, two boys. Thank you for your super chat. That's very generous of you. Uh, and uh, what a great, uh, what some great answers from Daniel there. That was awesome. Very awesome. Um, all right. So. You kind of already shared a little bit about how the opportunity came about for Saul X and and uh, which was cool how uh, you were basically one day you're it's business as usual. The next day you're a, you're like you're the stunt coordinator. You know, you're not going anywhere. And uh, yeah. that, that's amazing. Um, and this kind of I did have a question that's kind of kind of similar to what two boys just asked, but. When you read the script for Saul X, right? When they gave you the script and you're like, okay, here's the movie. Uh, here's what we're going to have to do. What is your process or what was, and maybe for the new movie you're working on now, just what's like, what's your process you do to envision the stunts that need to be performed? Do you like, do you see a particular stunt and you're like, okay, well, we're going to need this rig. We're going to need this. Or like, like, how do you approach the stunt performing when you read the script? Well, basically, I do create a, an image in my head of how I would do it. Okay. But in that image, um, I'm, I'm looking at a set that I built for that specific stunt, which is not always the set that I'm going to have. So most of the times uh, when you first read the script or get the information on how the, the, the scene's gonna go, you would like to, to hear what the location will be, the set will be, will be looking like and what other things are involved, the costumes, the props, and if there are cars, if there are horses, if there are bikes or any kind of, uh, of anything that would uh, alter what, what a person can do. Because uh, when you're dealing with a horse, you're not uh, the only one thinking about what's going to happen, right? And yeah. you have to be ready for whatever the horse may do. And it applies to all the different scenarios. So mm -hmm. at first, I, when they were talking about saws and talking about um, somebody hanging and talking about somebody getting burned behind the mask, I was thinking, okay, not not all of that has to do only with us, but there's many other yeah. uh, departments involved. So 
what we do would be like, okay, so how is a special effects going to do the burning? How is um, yep. the set, uh, how does the, look, the set looks like? Uh, yeah. Where are we going to hang her from? And so that those things were going to, were coming up uh, as we were uh, preparing the, the movie. Right. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I did. Yeah. I was just, you know, really curious about that. Cause I know you, like you say, you have these other departments that are involved that have to help make that, you know, come to life with you. And, uh, but that's cool, man. I, I appreciate that. I kind of figured that, you know, once you have that visual, right. Then you're, then it's like, okay, who do, who do we go to to help us? Right. Or who do we talk to, to figure out yeah. ABC, you know, right down the road. Um, now I was, I also was curious, like, what was the shooting schedule like for Saw X? Like, you know, it's like your typical days or hours per day, like days per week. What was your, uh, do you recall like what that was like, your shooting schedule? Well, in Saw X, um, at first it wasn't going to be a project with many days for stunts, but as we were moving forward with the pre-production um we encountered that there were more to do with stunts that everybody thought so at on the first three weeks of shooting which were before we changed from 2022 to 2023 it was um, we finished shooting on the 27th of november uh, if i recall and it, we were um on set like for around five or six different times not much okay but after that on the on the second part of the movie um we were on set almost every week uh, maybe two or three times a week because on top of performing for gabriella's trap we had to to rig everything and prepare for it make rehearsals and at the same time they were filming in a close by location and it was it was a little bit complicated so we needed to work um under pressure on days off and uh Ooh. it was it was it was fun yeah and not too easy pretty intense pretty intense it sounds like yeah a lot, a lot going on wow we um so hey we got a question here from in the uh for, in the chat from paula uh paula says what was your most dangerous stunt that you had to coordinate for Saw X? Well, that's definitely Gabriella's trap. That would be yeah. the most dangerous stunt. Yeah, she was hanging from, it, it would be like um, her foot, it would be six foot up, but her hand, the she, it was her left hand, it would be around uh, 10 feet. 10 feet above the ground. So if she fell because of the position she was uh, hanging, um, she would have maybe broken something. And yeah. the, the, the rope that we used for, um, for that kind of scene, um, they're supposed to hang up to four tons, which is a lot. But when somebody's life is on the line, you can't just... Uh, depend on supposedly it's gonna hold four tons so we had mats underneath it would be two foot two feet uh, thick uh mats and actually one of the of the sequences where it, when she swings and and she moves because of the x-ray machine um they wanted to do a they wanted to shoot it from the point of view of of jigsaw so um at first we were gonna place a whole bed a long bed uh made of uh, of mats and but they were gonna be on the screen so what we did is like we assigned i assigned two guys that were underneath her with two different mats um for eight feet by eight feet and they were just there to capture well, okay so uh, the the camera wouldn't be looking underneath her 
but it would be looking uh, a little bit in front. Yeah. So as she moved, they moved with her and the camera moved at the same time. So nobody saw the mask, but they were all, all the time underneath her. So there was always two ways to keep her safe. Gotcha. Woo. I'm sure that made her feel a lot better too. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, having that yeah. extra safety to precaution just in case. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah, that's awesome, man. There's some, yeah, that there's, there's some great stuff in this movie, guys. If you, again, if anyone watching this now or on the replay, uh, you have not seen Saul X. It's, it's, it's a must view. It's a must watch. Also, you can follow Daniel on Instagram. Here is uh, his actual Instagram. And you can also follow him on Four Element Stunts as well, which is right here in the chat. All you got to do is click the links. Thank you, Julie, and to all the mods for posting these links. And go and follow both of them. Follow Four Elements and follow Daniel as well. Stay up to date with what's going on. Yeah. Stephen, uh, there's, a, there's a question I see in the chat that I would like to answer before yeah, holding the guy's uh, question. And is it this one? Thanks. It's uh, the, the right right above it. Uh, two boys and there's scary pops. That oh, one. here we go. Uh, so gotcha. the most rewarding thing is that everybody would think it's adrenaline. And it is part of it. But no, it's the the satisfaction that gets you right after you did something that anyone could be killed by, but you did it safely mm -hmm. and you did it precisely and, and it, everything was according to plan. That, that the satisfaction that gets you, it's so big because yeah, it's like playing with fire <laughs> kind okay. of thing, but at the same time being really in control when it's well performed so mm -hmm. yeah i don't wow. know it's a different kind of thrill yes hey real quick uh before we get to hollywood guys super chat um we have uh, a nathan here that says i can vouch for daniel he's 100 percent i oh, work with him there you go nathan <laughs> as a stunt double How you doing, bro hey, yeah he is I, I, he, he works with us he's uh, he's a friend of mine Oh, that's awesome. Welcome, Nathan. We're glad you're here, man. Yeah. This is great to have you in the chat. That's awesome. Nathan's been, Nathan was um, Tobin Bell, Bell's stunt double for Sox. He did the bloodboarding trap. Oh, got you. Okay. Maybe, hey. maybe he, he'd be on for an interview, too. I would love that, Nathan. If Yeah, Nathan, if you'd like to, uh, to uh, I'd love to have you on to talk about your experience. Uh, both on Saw X and maybe other projects. So, yeah, I'd love to. Um, I guess, Daniel, I can check with you about maybe how to reach out to Nathan, maybe on social or what have you. Um, sure, I'll send it to you. That'd be great if you could. I'd appreciate it. I'll, I'll reach, him, wanna reach out to him for sure and uh, maybe get both of you guys back. Maybe bring you back if you're up for it and, and you guys can sure. be on together even. That could be fun. Definitely. Yeah. Very cool. Well, Nathan, thank you so much. And I hope to get to meet you, Nathan. That would be a lot of fun. All right. Now we do have a super chat. And then a Hollywood guy has sent $5 in to support the channel. Thank you, Hollywood guy. It means a lot. Uh, he says, how do you prepare you or your team to do a dangerous stunt in a scene? Well, I, I can tell you for the experience I had in SOX is that uh, I don't prepare as the same as some other partners do. And for this specific movie, uh, we did uh, rehearsals. So basically we, we built the trap and we used it. Okay. That basically, so we, we used it of course, without any kind of, of x-ray machine that that was vfx ah. but for for the trap that uh, nathan did the bloodboarding trap 
um, that was something that I didn't know how to how to come up with. So what I did is I basically waterboarded myself. Oh, I filled up I filled up um, a big uh, bottle of water uh, and I just let it let it run on my face. Oh, man. Just to make sure it was it was wow. Safe. Actually, my wife helped me with it. Okay. She was shooting. I can imagine that was, <laughs> yeah. Did, did and of course I know you're used to being in these, I guess escalated, you know, where the danger levels. It's even though it's done safely, there's still there's still some danger in, to what you do. Um, but even with that, how did you feel internally as the water was coming on your face? Did you get to that point where you were struggling, like you wanted to take a breath and you couldn't, or how did that how did that feel? Um, no, not really. The what what I, I think that happens is that when somebody is really waterboarded, um, you you need to be restrained. I, 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 you should be able to move your head to to the side so the water comes straight into your nose and mouth, and on that. On the on that that specific situation, I was able to turn my head, take a breath, ah, and okay. keep doing it. What yeah. I wasn't able to do was keeping the water away from my out of my nose and eyes. Oh. So it was you know itchy uh, for yeah. a couple of days. I got kind of cold because of it. Yeah. But I mean, what what I what I did was telling the the direction team. It can be done. It's gonna be really uncomfortable. It's gonna be stingy, itchy, uh, but it can be done with water. So uh, after that, we need to figure out what's gonna be put into them and how we can take care of them because it gets in your eyes and your nose and yeah. the mouth. Well, you can control the mouth, but not not the other part. So um, wow. that was the that was the discussion after the the. Tri trials we did nathan did the trial too oh wow man wow so that that's whew. yeah I, I don't know man again that's I, I couldn't do any of that stuff man i can't oh no um that's uh that that's something else i mean but you know what what, what i admire about daniel what you're saying is that you know you got in there yourself you know, you're like, you're like, I'm going to get in. You got in there yourself and and, yeah. and and tested it out, too. It wasn't just like, you know, it may mean, I think it, I'm sure it means a lot to your team when they see that you're willing to jump in and and do it. Right. Like you're that, that, that to me, that that's a huge to me. That's a huge thing. So I'm sure that that meant a lot to your team and probably gave them even more uh, incentive or, or encouragement to to just go for it and, 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 and test it on them as well. So that's also well, that you did that. Well, I was, uh, before I became a stunt, I was, uh, I, I did parkour for a lot of, the, of years and ah. I started training kids, uh, to, to start doing flips at a karate dojo and cool. I, in order for me to transmit what I wanted them to do, I, I, I needed to show them. And you cannot show something you cannot do. That's so right. So I, I try to do the same thing here. If I can't do it, I'm not going to be able to ask somebody to do it. That's right. Because I'm not going to be able to say it's safe until I've tried it. Mm -hmm. Right. So basically, yeah. if I'm alive and I'm well after doing it, I'm going to make sure you're too. That's uh, yeah. that's basically it. Love it. That's awesome, man. Hollywood guy, thanks for a, a great question, and thank you for your super chat. Supporting the channel means a lot uh, and really does help out. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Drusif has a question for you. It says, uh, "What yeah. do you think about high impact stunts like the one that got the stunt actor hurt in Harry Potter?" Well, that's that's a tragedy. I already watched the documentary, and hmm. I think it could be it could have been prevented. 
but when they were doing it, not everybody knew what we know now. Mm. And what I what we do in the forum instance to prevent that from happening mm -hmm. is um, we try with little weight first, and we go increasing the weight until we have the well, what we want to see on screen. And if at some point between the first trial and what we want to see something is not right, we start again and we see what went wrong. But we never get to the point with, where somebody can get hurt. At first we use um, a weight bag and we fill it up with sandbags and we start increasing um, 20 pounds, 10 pounds, okay. even five pounds, just to make sure that there's not that high impact that David Holmes had. Okay, all right. And you, I mean, you do, you, you learn, right? That's the big thing. I mean, when there is a tragedy or there's, you know, something happens that's unfortunate. I mean, the number one thing is to learn from it, right? To don't, it's what never happens again. Yeah, that's right. Thanks, Drusif. Good question. Much appreciated. Um, and uh, Two Boys says, appreciate you putting your body on the line to bring us great entertainment. We appreciate you very much. Yes. Thank you. Absolutely agree with that. <clears throat> All right. Um, so we got about 15 more minutes, guys. So keep sending in your questions. Remember, Super Chats do move to the front of the line ahead of everyone else. So you have that option. Plus, it helps the channel keep the lights on here as I continue to do more interviews like this with Daniel and live streams. So your support is greatly appreciated. Um, now, I want to ask you this. Uh, how much interaction and time did you have working with Tobin Bell or Shawnee Smith? Did you did you have some time with, with them on set? Yes, definitely. Um, with Shawnee Smith, uh, we had a little bit more time because the scenes Every scene where, you know, Pig had kidnapped somebody, it was Shawnee. Mm -hmm. So she was on set. And the the hard parts of it, it was her stunt double. Okay. Christina. So every every time you, you see Pig Head uh, on set, it was it was us uh, interacting with her. She's really ama an amazing person. She's uh, she's so lively and energetic. She's and, and she cooperates a lot. Great, wonderful, and of course, then you have the great Tobin Bell, which is I just a big fan of his. I think he's a phenomenal actor. Um, how how was that time that you had with him? Well, could you like to any experiences you'd like to share? Well, yeah, with him, it was it was just a short amount of time and. Okay. Uh, at first, it was just to make sure that when he was pulled into the plank, he didn't hurt hurt himself. So, okay, we would uh, we would think at first that it was gonna be Nathan who did the stunt, but he wanted to be there as much as possible. So, we we asked production to to get us a a cushion, and I got amazed of how much he knew about about that and mm -hmm. he told me the the thickness and he he told me what density he wanted it to be wow and I was okay okay that that's amazing that makes it easy <laughs> for me to yeah I, I know what to go get right mm -hmm. and and then he told me like don't worry I, i've been on uh, over a hundred films and i know what i'm doing because I, I i was really worried that he would hurt himself but yeah. when he was, uh, when I saw that he was so, so um, sure of it, I trusted what, what he was telling me and we just worked around that on, on top of it. Okay. Wow, that's pretty amazing. He knows exactly what he needed. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, now, uh, 
let's see here. Hold on. Let me make sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, Polar. Hey, Polar. Polar says the teeter totter scene with a little boy was so intense. Yeah, it was. Yeah, for sure. It was. Oof, boy, that 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 movie was. Mm. I tell you, once once you learn what's going on, like what's really going on, <laughs> and and I'm like, dude, you mess with the wrong guy. Like these these people, you picked the wrong victim, my friends. <laughs> and Hoff told him, like, from all the people you could get. Yes. You went after John Kramer, like, come yes. on, come on, man. That's exactly. Um, let's see here. We got another question from two boys, which I, I, uh, I think is a good one for you. It says, what's yeah, the foundation? Yeah, and then if you were new to the field, like you know, new to stunt work, where do you start in prepping your body? Like, that's a good question. Well, for the first question, the foundation will be first knowing your body, how it moves, what it can do, what it can't, and being aware of your surroundings at all times, being able to focus and be disciplined. That would be the foundation. And among some other things, right? You have to be a little bit crazy. That's for sure. <laughs> yes. But if someone was new to this field, uh, the, I would, first of all, I would recommend that you really think about the, the stunts that, that have all of the accidents on the mm -hmm. industry and how they affected everybody mm -hmm. that, that was on. on. And if you still want to do it after looking at that, I would recommend that you started training many disciplines. For example, boxing is a good discipline. Um, mm -hmm. Jiu-Jitsu is a great discipline. And those two help you with uh, perhaps a fight scene. But being a stunt involves just too many things that you you never stop learning and you never stop training so yeah i can tell you that for at four element stunts um what you would be asked to show in order to become part of the team will be at least four different disciplines that you mm -hmm. dominate and a proof that you do so if you're a black belt on karate okay that's great you're a black belt you have uh maybe your black belt and you have some kind of of diploma or something because of, of the levels that you have to go across in boxing goes the same but there's some things that you can't just have a paper so if you're a, a good skater I, I would show videos of what i do in skates on skates mm -hmm. And the same if you do a downhill and you're uh, just um, like a Red Bull pro, that's something that, that, that you will need to do. So as the more prepared you are, the better it's going to be for you. And the younger you start is going to play an awesome role for you too. Because as we grow old, we stop being able to learn new skills and our bodies uh, oh. stop moving the way they, mm -hmm. they, they used to. So the younger, the better, and the more prepared in different areas, the better. But water, yeah. well, it, for them and stunts, it's, it's, it's exactly because of, of the, the disciplines that we, we, we do, right? So we do water, being able to swim, and right now, for me, another part is being able to dive. Uh, those are important. The fire that you you learn while you're stunned. You, you, you don't get it outside because nobody else does what we do <laughs> with fire. Right. But in the air, um, free falls, and that's that's a, a big area that nobody, no, not everybody is ready for. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, on land, 
being able to fight, being able to ride a, a bike, a bicycle, skates, uh, skateboard, uh, everything that has to go on land, and being uh, having a good condition overall, all of that that it is needed. So yeah, as much as you can get out of every part. <clears throat> wow, man, yeah, man, that's that's a lot. I mean, it's a very, very serious um, and dangerous field. Really, it is. But man, it's when you execute it, it looks so good. <laughs> it looks so good, man. Um, Polar had a question for you. Daniel said, did they get a stunt actor for the kid too? Or is there a camera trick so it looks like he's being dunked? No, there was a stunt double for him too. He's called uh -huh. Victor and he he's just super small and he looks like a kid. But he's 30 years old and... He's actually uh, a wrestler. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Very cool. See, this stunt, I'm telling you, man, it's stunt doubles, stunt performers, and all these scenes that they make him real. They bring him to life. It's incredible. I mean, it just would not be the same. Like I was telling Daniel before we went live, I'm like, without all these amazing stunt performers and coordinators and there would be these movies would be awful they would just be they would not be good so we it's it's we definitely owe so much to the stunt community for their contributions to every film we watch and and certainly here on this channel i'm going to always make sure that you know we show the res proper respect and recognition that i feel is deserved and and need it for the stunt community because i highly respect you daniel and your and your peers and what you do for these movies that that make us enjoy them so much so thank you Stephen. oh yeah you're very welcome man i mean i really mean it um now as we start to kind of wrap up start heading towards the the end here uh, i'm just curious uh, Daniel, what what did you find maybe to be looking back on the the whole experience of Saw X? What would you say was the most fulfilling or exciting part of being, you know, or, of of being a part? I mean, of, of Saw X. What was the most exciting or fulfilling thing that you still feel today? Well, looking back, it would be being able to form part of such a saga yeah. that is something amazing because um i always wanted to to start on hollywood films you know that's the the mm -hmm. epitome of of the movies and to have my first uh my first job as a coordinator to be on Hollywood and on that kind of movie. That's just amazing. Yeah, it is. Truly is. Wow. That's a huge accomplishment and a huge blessing. And man, I just, I can only imagine how that felt. I had to feel pretty darn good. Pretty darn good um, for sure. Um, and I love what Eric says here. Daniel, much respect for someone who knew what he wanted to do, went out and made it happen. Appreciate you taking the time tonight. This was very insightful. Yeah. My pleasure. I, yeah, man. 100%. Uh, and just one more time, I want to remind everyone, you can follow Daniel right here on his Instagram. Be sure and give him a follow and stay in touch with what's going on, you know, and He'll keep you up to date on new things as he can or is able to do. And also, Four Elements Stunts. Here is their Instagram uh, uh, page. Please go follow them there as well. And you'll see uh, Daniel. And, my, and then how many how many folks are on the team now over there on Four Elements? Uh, I would say around 20. Wow, pretty big, pretty big group then. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. 
Okay. And I would like to share with you all these um, two, yeah. two pictures I have here. Yeah. This one, it's a picture of the set that the props team made for the oh. for the crew. Oh. Uh, pictures of Billy. And yeah. Cool. These guys, these guys over here are the the props team, and. Uh, here I, I got it signed by Kevin Gertrude, the director. Oh, yeah, the director. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. awesome, man. Very nice. Yeah. And over here, I have this. Uh, this is Cecilia looking at her TV um, on the cameras, uh -huh. and it was made by hand of the oh, stunt, wow. uh, the visual effects supervisor. Wow, that's very cool. Man, one of a kind. That seriously is. Dang, very nice, man. Now you do you have I'm sure you had those hanging somewhere prominently yeah. in your in your home, I would hope. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> those are awesome. People are loving you in the chat as well. That's awesome for sharing. Thank you for sharing those. That's really, really cool, man. Um now, here's a question I have for you. <laughs> um, in terms of the traps and the contraptions and, you know, all the pieces that make up some of these crazy traps. Um, and I know the prop master probably is pretty tight controls over those things. But um, did you have an opportunity or, 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 or maybe... Uh, do you have any idea where a lot of those things ended up? Like some of those, uh, you know, some of those traps. Well, like you like it for right here, like here, you know, these these contraptions for the head, the eyes, like just stuff like that. Is that is any of that stuff uh, out there that you know of, or maybe some of the props team got to keep? Or well, uh, yeah, there's uh, there was this kind of a sale of some of the props. But okay. um, they weren't selling like the traps. They were just selling like the watches and uh, mm -hmm. you know small stuff. The traps, everything that you saw on on the movie, they packed it up in big crates and they sent them to to the production. The studios. Ah, so they they're probably locked up in a warehouse somewhere. Yeah, they are. Key. Dang. Okay. I always like to ask because it's always a neat thing, uh, like you know, to find out what happened. And real quick, uh, before we go, we have one more super chat that came through. Julie, thank you so much for the two dollar super chat. Says, did you work with Costas uh, Mandalore for this scene? Yeah, yeah, we were there. We were hanging. Uh, nice. We we're. Uh, oh, I just forgot his name. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, we we we, read, we were reading the scene, and making it safe, so and it cool. was inside the bathroom. It was that that was amazing. They built it here in Mexico. It was ah. the, an exact copy of the of the bathroom. That was wow. amazing. Dang, neat. That's awesome. That's great. That's awesome. Great, great question, Julie. And yeah, he sure did. How about that? That's. A lot of neat experiences, it sounds like, Daniel, that you had. That's really fantastic, man. Um, and I appreciate you sharing them with us. It's it's wonderful. Um, now, I was going to ask you, as our, my last question, is if you have any current or upcoming projects you're working on uh, that you could share, but we know you have, you're not able to share details, and, that's, uh, and I get that. But we do know that uh, you are working on a... Uh, undisclosed thriller uh, right now. That's yeah. wonderful. Do you have any idea um, when it may be coming out, like like for release? Well, I think it's going to come... Um, you're going to be... I, I think it, it was... I heard that it might be released by... I don't know if it's going to be November this okay. year or or maybe February next year. Okay. Well, we'll keep our eyes open then. And then maybe, Daniel, as we get closer to it, once once they uh, release the embargo on some of this stuff and 
where they, you know, folks can talk about, you can talk about it. Yeah, sure. I'd, love, I'd love to have you back to talk about it uh, once you're able to. Of course. Yes, that would be wonderful. I'm excited about it already uh, at doing that. So, uh, well, this has been a lot of fun, Daniel. I want to thank you for, again, making the time to spend with us. And it's been a total blast, as I knew it would be. And thank you for sharing and being transparent on all these answers and giving us a chance to see some insight to your life and your world. And it's phenomenal and you do an amazing job. And like I say, I'm really excited to find out about this next film because I'm so impressed with your work in Saul X. That I know, I, seriously, I, I know it's going to carry right over to the next film. So I'm, I cannot wait for that. So, uh, Daniel, if you just hang tight, I'll meet you backstage like we started uh, in just sure, a second. Okay. And for everyone else in the chat, I want to thank you all. Thanks to all my moderators, uh, Sarah and Julie, uh, for keeping uh, the links posted. Again, don't forget to follow Daniel on Instagram and also on Four Elements Stunts on Instagram. Let's give them some follows, help build the community up. That would be a fantastic. Um, you're very welcome, Drew. It was it was it was great, great time. Drew says thank you, Daniel. Appreciate hearing from you. Um, that's awesome. And uh, Two Boys says best travels in your journey in this field. That's awesome. Thanks, Two Boys, and thanks everybody. And th those were great questions, and we can yeah. uh, keep uh, talking on Instagram and you know keep in touch. Yes, absolutely. That's absolutely. Let's do that. Let's do that, everybody. Um, well, guys, thank yes, you I all. Hope to be back too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. Seriously, I know. Um, that would be amazing <laughs> for sure. Something. Thanks, I'm fingers crossed, right, Daniel? For me, anyway. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. All. You bet. All right. Uh, so, Daniel, I'll see you in a second again for everyone else. Thank you for joining in for the live stream tonight. And if you're watching this on a replay in a week or two or a month or two, thank you as well. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to follow Daniel on Instagram. And this was an amazing time. Thank you all so much. And we'll see you on the next live stream. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Bye-bye. See you. Hey, you have been watching Craving Something Scary. This is Lee Waddell, the original Ghostface, thanking you for stopping by and checking it out.